one guy we didn't get to see really practice in the spring was Varner, and I'm just curious how much you got to know about him, even though he couldn't practice because of the injury. And, and what do you anticipate he should be able to give that defensive front? Well, first I learned about him a little bit as a competitor, right? I, I got to see him play um, on film, but also in person. Uh, beyond that here, what I saw out of him was a guy who was pretty relentless in his preparation, even though he knew and we knew he wasn't going to be able to be out there on the field in the spring. And then that continued all the way through the summer. So uh, I've seen him do it as a competitor on the field, and I've seen the way his preparation and mindset didn't change an iota even when he couldn't be out there. So the fact that he'll be out there in the fall, I have high expectations because uh, I've seen it, but I've also seen it with my own eyes here. There's been a ton of talk about how the offense might be different under a new regime, but not a lot of focus on the defense. Kind of what maybe can we expect out of the defense that might be similar or different or your own kind of strategy from what maybe Wisconsin fans are used to seeing? I hope that there's an awful lot for an offense to prepare for when it comes to our defense. You know, I talked a lot before spring ball when we, when we first rolled in as a defensive staff how we were going to pair the elite of the Wisconsin defense and the Cincinnati defense. Um, and what I found over the course of spring ball is our guys could handle a lot schematically and continue to play fast because being able to play confident and fast is priority one. But then if you can add on a few different packages and create some different looks for quarterbacks and coordinators in particular, obviously that's a huge bonus. And I was excited how our kids were able to handle that. So, um, you know, might be a little bit more uh, different package looks than you've seen in the past, but we have guys that can definitely handle that, and that's really exciting. And I do think there were some elite things that have been done here in the past, and, and also that Coach Fick and our defensive staff and done, have done in the past, and our guys are handling them very well and, and truly excited about it. So it's fun to watch. Jake. Mike, with – one player that you you know had a chance to watch with you know specifically with Hunter Wohler, uh, just what does he bring in the defensive backfield and just how you utilize him in the spring that maybe you can't with other players? So he has a combination of a skill set that's very versatile, off the field intelligence and football intelligence instincts. You know that that package, so that allows you to be <laughs> use him in a lot of different ways. He's versatile as an athlete, and mentally he's really, really sharp, and he plays with instincts. When a guy does multiple things on the football field, whether it's playing a couple different positions or being asked to do a variety of different assignments, you can't cover every single situation that an offense might run against every one of those positions. So a guy that has natural football instincts, you can trust him to do more things. Uh, it, it was fun to watch him play a variety of different positions. He was asked to do a lot under Coach Leonard. The safeties were asked to do a lot under Coach Leonard. I think we've stepped that up even a little bit more. And um, also the other thing is I think his leadership, he's, al he's always been viewed as a leader because he's a very good football player. He's really embracing that role right now, which is big for us as well. Carly, in the back. Yeah, losing guys like Nick Herbig and Keanu Benton is tough, obviously. I'm wondering, how important it is to have game changers on defense and how you'll use camp to evaluate who can step up into those kind of roles. So you use the term game changer, and, and I feel you. You're, you're exactly you hit the nail on the head. We talked uh, in our coaches' retreat yesterday about the objectives for each position group, but also each unit. And when we were talking about the depth of, on defense, we were talking about you know identifying those starters, making sure we have 22 minimum that can play, but then it was also identify those game changers and how you're going to use them. And I do think we have guys, we just mentioned Hunter Wohler, I think that uh, um, the guys that are stepping up on the edges where Herbig used to play, you know, maybe a Rodas Johnson stepping up, making, he made plays last year, but even into a bigger role, that's, that's going to be huge. And we're going to give them opportunities to do those things in camp. Um, we do believe one of our sayings is we want football players, not football players, which means we're going to give them some freedom. We're not creating robots out there. 
So let's see who with that freedom can be those playmakers. And, and we do have to identify that because we did lose some. There's no secret to that, but I think we have the replacement parts. Evan? Coach, in, in the spring, it looked like you were trying to find different ways to get Jake Cheney on the field, even if it meant using three inside linebackers at once. So I'm just curious, what, what do you like about him? And you know, maybe how do you see him impacting the defense if you're able to you know, roll with some of those packages this year? He's another guy like Hunter that has very good football instincts. Uh, quite honestly, I think he was maybe under-recruited, undervalued because he's not as long as what people would say the perfect linebacker looks like. But uh, he has great football instincts. He carries a huge punch. Um, he's very, very twitchy. Like his 10-yard burst, and that's usually about as far as you're typically going. His 10-yard burst is unbelievable. So when you have a guy that has those skill sets, you need to find a way to use them. And I think that we do truly have three true starters at inside linebacker. So that's on us. But that's also on those guys then embracing the fact that if we have three guys for two positions, maybe three at times, but if we have three guys for two positions and we utilize each other correctly at the end of the year, we should be that much stronger and healthier. Cool. Mike, do you have to do anything on defense to adjust for an up-tempo offense where you know this program is used to maybe the defense getting some longer rests where you know if it's three and out, it might be 10, 15 seconds off the clock for the defense. Like, Do you have to do anything to make sure your guys are ready for that type of thing? Depending on the offense that you have, in your program, there might be more things that you have to do. I think the fact that uh, obviously Coach Longo's offense, our current offense, uses a lot of tempo, that prepares us, right? That does prepare us. I do believe, though, you know, if you talk about how much time do you have off on the sideline between series, it's hard to get a real feel for that until you're in a game situation. Um, and that's where we need to make sure we have 22 guys that can play. Because it, if, it, if it is a very short series, you need to have next guys that are ready to roll. We're also talking about you know, what's the ideal number of snaps for each guy to play in a given game and, and how are we going to work the rotation. Certainly the tempo, uh, the, the rotation during and against tempo teams is something you have to rehearse and practice and understand too. So you don't have any of the um, unnecessary penalties, clearly. But I do think our offense is preparing us for the world of 2023 football, and we'll be ready. Zach. Got a Big Ten media days last week. A couple of people mentioned Nizir as being somebody under the radar uh, to watch in fall camp. What stands out to you about him? Has some length and uses it. He is absolutely a competitor, um, a guy who stepped into, quite honestly, this is a different level of football than he'd been playing. and did not phase him, did not cause any hesitation, uh, walked in humble but believing in himself. And, and again, he's a guy with length. He's a guy that uses length. We've seen plenty of guys with long arms that they just hang down at their sides. Um, he uses that length. He is also a guy that, uh, like we've mentioned a couple of times, which I think is huge for our defense as a whole, he has some football awareness. It's hard to come in having not even a full spring or whatever the case is, and be ready to go that fall and be able to have a significant role unless you understand the game because there's no way to walk through a rep every scenario. And, and he does have a good feel too. So uh, he's confident, he's ready to go. He uses his skills and he picks it up quickly. Steve? This is a defense that has been really, had been really highly ranked over the last several years with a coordinator who a lot of the players really, really liked. How do you go about, how'd you go when you got the job? How do you go about introducing yourself to the guys and letting them know this, things might be a little different, we'll have a different guy in charge, but you can still be just as successful with this defense? Two things. One, I believe you have to be yourself, right? Even when you come, I came into University of Cincinnati following up a coordinator who players loved and did a great job, right? And that's, that's a challenge. But authenticity, that's recognized. I've also been fortunate enough to coordinate some very, very good defense. So I have a little bit of history behind me that, shoot, people jump on the computer on their own and say, who is this guy? They, oh, OK. Develop some players, develop some, some defenses. Didn't really have to address the fact that 
hey, I'm going to be myself. I'm not going to try to be Jim Leonard. Um, I respect the heck out of him. They respect the heck out of him. But that doesn't take away from the relationship I'm going to have with our guys. And, and the great thing about it is we have a group of guys that love football and love the University of Wisconsin. So this is the situation that we're in and, and trusted Coach Fick would bring in good people and embraced it. So I think we're in great shape there. I know you went through this with Coach Fickle last season at Cincinnati, but this going away for at least part of training camp, what, what have you noticed that that does for a team, or how have you seen that kind of maybe long-term benefit a team when you start a season like that? Well, it's awesome. Easy answer as a coach is you basically can be thinking football 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? Um, you actually end up getting a heck of a lot more sleep in camp than you normally would because if you start at 6.30 in the morning, you can wake up at 6.27 and roll at 6.30 in the morning. But the, the truth of the matter is um, we need to put our guys through some adversity where they can learn to lean on each other or gain the trust in their coaches. Or you know, It's, it's easy to believe in a new system, new situation, new coaches when everything's going good. So camp – we're going to make it difficult. We're going to try to find ways uh, where the guys have to face adversity, and they're going to be stuck in a situation where they have no one else to lean on, no one to go home and bitch to, for lack of a better term. They're going to lean on each other, and, and those bonds really form. And, and this is a more a question for Coach Fick, but I bet he'd tell you when he first got to Cincinnati, and that was historically what they did, he was like, ah, I don't know how this will go. And he bought in really quick because he saw the team pull together. And he does a good job of making it really, really tough and forcing those guys to pull together. So um, we put them in a situation where they can do that, put them in um, – I think we have some leaders that will make it happen fast too, but we do need to be in those situations where it's tough and we can do that at camp and they have no other answers but each other. Uh, if there was one position group that you maybe want to see the most out of or have the most questions going, in to, uh, going into the training camp about, where would that be? Almost an impossible question because this is the first season working with these guys, so there's things I want to see out of every single position group. Um, you know, I think that the defensive line is such an integral part to what we do, and with Benton being gone, who steps up, but but – more than that, how many guys get to the point that they're one A's or one B's? And when we say one A's or one B's, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you're one or two on the depth chart. We view you as a starter, and we're going to play you as such. How many guys can we get to that point? I think that's really, really critical to our success that you can roll guys in those positions. The outside linebackers um, have been difference makers in our defense. Which guys are going to be difference makers? I think that's really important. And then uh, I think the emphasis on the corners position is at another level. We've brought in some new guys, tried to add some depth, and, and are really going to ask guys to do some things different than they have, and, and they're going to need to perform. 